For the second time in 2020, Darktable has had a massive overhaul. The list of things that are new is just astonishing. And so I thought that rather than try and smash this all into one video, I'm going to break it up into four videos. So over the next four episodes, we are going to look at all of the new goodies that Santa has brought us. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 78 of Understanding Dark Table. This is part two of the four episodes on the new features of Dark Table 3.4. First up, we are going to look at a new module that Aurelian has been working on called Color Calibration. Now, I will confess I'm only halfway through Aurelian's very extensive video on this module. What I have picked up so far is that A, Color Calibration replaces the channel mixer, and B, and I think this is the more exciting part, this is like the white balance module, but in my opinion, it's way better. The original legacy white balance module operated prior to demosaicing, and it did not support the use of masks. The color calibration module works after demosaicing, and yes, you guessed it, you can use masks. Drawn, parametric, drawn and parametric, and raster masks. So, the beauty of it is, as a white balance corrector, is that if you've got an image like this sample image that I shot, oh, I don't know, what, 15, 20 episodes ago of my son Max, where I deliberately shot this with two different white balances. I've got a tungsten light on camera left, uh, which was just a, a floodlight mounted on the side of our house, and I put up a flash on camera right, uh, which was daylight white balanced. So you've got two very distinctly different white balances in the one shot. The beauty of being able to work with masks in the color calibration module is you can tackle something like this and end up with a finished image that has a much more consistent color tone across both sides of the face. That's pretty cool. Now, I'm not going to go into the color calibration module in this episode simply because I need to learn a whole lot more about what it does and how it does it. Uh, but also understand that in the preferences under the processing tab, there is now a new auto apply chromatic adaptation defaults. Now, this will default to legacy and that will not use the color calibration module. So if you change this option to modern, any new image that you import will have the color calibration module added to the history stack at import. There's a whole lot of fun stuff to explore here and I'm looking forward to being able to do a dedicated episode on this and I'm hoping that will be, if not episode 81, then certainly 82. Now if you're itching to get into the color calibration module and you can't wait for me to get a dedicated video together for it, then by all means check out the new online documentation which I linked to in the comments below episode 77 because all of the information about the color calibration module is there. Woohoo! Love it! Alrighty, next up, Filmic V4 has also had a bit of an overhaul. The UI has changed a little bit. There are now four different display modes for the graph. And again, I'm not going to go into this in great detail because I do need to read up a little bit more about it. But here on the right hand side, we have this little round circular arrow icon. You can click on that to as you can see there from the pop-up tip, left click to cycle forward, right click to cycle backward, double click reset to the look view. So the look only is the default. Then we've got look plus mapping in a linear sense, look and mapping logarithmic. And the one that's really interesting, a representation of the Ansel Adams zone system. 
Like I said, I need to read up a bit more about all of this and I will do a dedicated video for this going forward. Uh, as yet, I haven't had chance to really dive into it, but just be aware that this is here. Uh, and once again, check out the online documentation if you really want to get up to speed on it in a hurry and you can't wait for me. The A button over here on the right side will allow us to turn labels on and off for all of the four views. Also, Filmic V4, as mentioned in episode 77, now supports OpenCL. So if you have a graphics card which supports OpenCL, hang on, graphics card would be OpenGL, wouldn't it? Anyway, if you have hardware that supports OpenCL, Filmic V4 now will utilize that hardware. So that's pretty cool. Next up, the Tone Equalizer module has had some modifications done under the hood. Apparently, the what was the current implementation up to version 3.4 wasn't particularly smooth. The guided filter that uh, was basically the, the main function of the module wasn't particularly smooth in the highlights or at least wasn't as smooth in the highlights as it was in the shadows. The current implementation of it in Darktable 3.4 is apparently much more balanced so that the degree to which the guided filter works in the shadows will be much more similar to you know, the degree to which it works in the highlights. So again, it's not something I've really dived into. It's not a module I use a whole lot. But for those of you who do use it, you will probably immediately recognize the benefits of that. Now, as part of this overhaul of the tone equalizer in the masking section, you will find in this preserved details drop down, there is a new mode called EIGF, which stands for Exposure Independent Guided Filter. And basically that is the new version of the guided filter that tends to work equally on the highlights the way it does in the shadows. So that is the new default, but you do still have those other options if you want to use them. Uh, I would suggest that you go back and watch the tone equalizer video if you need a refresher on that. I certainly would. And the last thing I'm going to mention from the release notes is that the blending modes now are correlated to a scene referred workflow. I don't fully understand it. The release notes didn't go into a great amount of detail. Uh, so if you have a tendency to use blending modes and you notice what the difference is, by all means, sing out in the comments down below. All right, that is going to do it for part two, and I will catch you in the next one.